Let us learn how to edit an item. Users need to be logged into the D space to edit an item. Go to the target item you want to edit. Users having item edit rights can see the edit button on the right. Click the edit button to go to the item edit module. Users can edit existing metadata or add fresh ones under the metadata tab. Let us edit a metadata value for learning purposes. Click the edit button next to a metadata element, update the editable value and click the confirm button to save changes. Edited rows appear in different colors for easy identification. Click the undo button to reverse changes. Click the delete button to remove a metadata element. Click the save button at the page bottom to save metadata updates. The status tab provides multiple editing options. These are authorization policy updates, mapping an item to multiple collections, withdrawal, making it non-discoverable or private, permanent deletion and movement to another collection. Let us explore some of them in depth. Different types of policies can be created for the item, all bit streams and individual bit streams. By clicking the add button, we will create a sample policy for the bit streams bundle. Add policy name and description for easy identification. Select policy and action types from respective drop-down lists. Users can select start and end dates to create a time-bound policy. Finally, select users or user groups, which are required to be added. And click the save button to create the policy. We can see the fresh policy in the bundle. To delete a policy, click the checkbox before the policy and click the delete button in the corresponding section. Click map collections to see collections having the item mapped. Map collections appear under the browse mapped collections tab and to add a fresh one, click the map new collections tab. Enter a few letters in the search field and click the search button to list target collections. Select target collections through checkboxes and click the map item to selected collections button. Users can click on other buttons to perform respective actions. The Bitstreams tab allows users to manage attachments and derivative outputs for the item. To add an attachment, click the upload button on the top of the page or the upload icon appearing next to each bundle. Select the target bundle from the drop-down list and click Browse to select an attachment. Upon successful attachment upload, users will be redirected to the Bitstream profiling page to update the file name and description, define the attachment as a primary Bitstream, create security policies, etc. Click the Delete button next to a Bitstream to remove the attachment. And, finally, click the Save button at the bottom to save all Bitstream's related updates. The Curate tab offers standard processes like profile Bitstream formats, mandatory metadata fields check, missing links in metadata, and the possibility to add custom processes. Select any process and click the Start button to initiate. If the item has related items then the same appears under the Relationship tab. Users can add other objects as related items if the item has an appropriate entity assigned. The Version History tab shows a list of versions created for the item. The active version is highlighted with the star sign. Users can edit version descriptions, delete them, or see version details by clicking Available buttons. The Access Control tab allows users to update access policies for the entire item, all bit streams, or specific bit streams. Click the switch next to Items Metadata to start the process. Select the appropriate radio button next to Mode to update or add a policy. Select the required policy type from the drop-down list under the Access Conditions. Select the Embargo End Date. Click the Add More button to continue adding more policies, as demonstrated in the walkthrough. Click the Execute button to apply policies. The Collection Mapper tab shows collections having the item mapped. 